So what I'm going to need from you is every red and white legendary creature you can find. Y yeah, no, 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 even Isamaru. He's a good boy. Hello folks, Phil Gallagher, aka Thraben, you here for another Legacy video. And I've got one so spicy for you that I think I'm just going to jump to this screen immediately. So, Rikimaru 6 ended up doing, I believe, a 4-1 league into a 7th place Legacy Challenge deck list with the pile of cards that you are seeing on screen here that, honestly, I'm going to need to cover most of them. So, the general strategy is that this is a Legendary Creatures Matter Mox Amber Aggro deck. So we are going to play a lot of legends that are perhaps a little bit below the power level standards of Legacy. But when you go and just get to be playing a Mox, that is going to feel roughly like a real Mox because of how many legendary creatures we have. Like, that is a real upside. Something that I've said in a few videos recently is that Aether Vial is at kind of a low. It just gets outsped by Ancient Tomb in the format right now, and Ancient Tomb is maybe the best it's ever been since I've been playing in Legacy. Um, arguably, like, White Plume Adventure Initiative being an outlier there. So having another way to accelerate out creatures early is pretty strong. And we are going to have some ways to funnel away extra copies of Mox Amber if we have them. And we can just go and scale up our legendary creatures. Uh, Flowering of the White Tree, I mean, honestly, it just fucks. Like, this is a, an incredibly strong anthem effect if you are building around legendary creatures. Because your legendary creatures get plus two, plus one, and have ward one which in Legacy usually means that you've doubled the cost of the removal spell that's targeting them, and your non-legendary creatures still get plus one, plus one. So this is a massive buff. And we've got, we've got stuff happening. War Leader's Call is a new card, and that's some fancy alternative art. It is another Anthem effect, and in addition to that, whenever a creature enters the battlefield under your control, War Leader's Call deals one damage to each opponent. So, if you have creatures that are going to go and produce extra token copies each turn cycle, you can turn those creatures into additional damage. And it makes some things like Sokenzen particularly cute, and maybe gives Andural Flame of the West a push into playability, as it does make two spirit tokens. And those spirit tokens are tapped and attacking if the equipped creature is legendary. Hmm. But yeah, there's a lot of stuff here that you probably haven't seen, including a creature that references non-gnome creatures. Not sure quite what the lore is there. Uh, if you're a lore nerd, let me know in the comments. Legitimately would appreciate that. And we do just have a Stoneforge Mystic package that can create a giant double-strikey trampling creature, or just kind of steal a game with Cauldra as well. The sideboard, relatively speaking, is pretty reasonable, although there's a most certainly a pointed hate card here for the Turbo Muxus Goblins matchup. So Yanni, thank you very much for giving me a dealer's choice donation deck list to kind of make this happen. Hope you're doing well, friend. If you end up needing to get any cards, check out Cool Stuff Inc. and use promo code THRABENU to save 5% on your order. And if you find yourself in the Tennessee area in March, consider coming to see me. Game Night in Columbia, Tennessee is going to hold a Legacy FNM on March 15th, as well as a CEDH tournament on March 16th, and I will be at both as their special guest. Let's battle. All right, so I'm working with 3-drop creature, 3-drop creature, 3-drop enchantment. I don't think this one cuts it. Oh, this is cool. So land Yoshimaru, Mox Ammer, scale, then play Isamaru. Uh, yeah, this is good. And I just decide whether or not, like, which one of these I'm keeping. It's probably a moot point because Inti probably loots either one of them away. 
I'm going to get rid of swords. Swords is not always good. Creatures are always good. Hello, doggos. Cast Mox Amber. Scale up. And second dog. It is turn one. I have five power worth of dogs in play. And my mouse has stopped working. And by that I mean the shortcuts have stopped working. That's annoying. That usually means it's updating and it'll fix itself in a minute. All right. Fable of the Mirror Breaker. Got it. So you've got a 2-2. Two -two. That can block this. This is whenever I attack, right? Yeah, this is whenever I attack. So I'm going to go Mox Amber. Keep the untapped one. Scale up the dog. Three mana. Play Adeline. Trigger this again. Go to combat. Send in with both. And then create a second creature as well. Uh, if my opponent trades bodies here, I am still hitting them for 6 damage. Or I'm hitting them for 7 if they just block the token. Uh, yeah, this is pretty good. Alright, I've given up, given up trying to figure out what's going on with my mouse. I'll just reboot after this game and everything will probably be fine. Alright, a fourth Aer Lingus goes down. Let's see what my opponent can do with their mana. They can get another mana from the goblin attacking at the cost of that body. Okay, they're just going to make some knights. Are you going to take the initiative? You are going to take the initiative. Oh, uh, sure. I'm going to go ahead and take my block. I think getting rid of the constant mana producer is probably wise. All right. I don't have a red legend yet. So this does cost me a life. I'll scale up my dog. Uh, and my opponent concedes. They must have been fishing with fourth air lingas and then just like were unhappy with where they ended up at. So things that I can consider. Containing priest can stop throne of the dead three. Lauren can blow up some things that my opponent has, but is maybe not overly exciting. I'd really be looking for extra removal spells out of the sideboard, which I don't have. I can consider playing this just as a 2-2 pro-red first striker, and like, that's not crazy. It still can blow up a table of the Mirror Breaker Goblin. So I think this is going to be more of a, is there anything in the main deck that is just not reasonable? I'm not really sure that there is. I think I'm just whacking the submit button. So my opening hand plays a 2-2 on turn 1, no play on turn 2, okay play on turn 3. I think I'm going to try to fish for something stronger than this. Uh, this is much stronger. Just Stoneforge into Cauldra um, is actively good. I don't know that I get to keep double Sunbaked Canyon. Like, that's an awkward amount of self-damage. It is the white-white for Brimaz, but I don't really intend on playing Brimaz in a meaningful way in this game. My opponent is mulliganing to at least five here. All right, yeah, they are on five. It is an Urza Saga, uh, which I will just wasteland immediately. That's totally fine. Um... But after my opponent has mulligan a couple of times, I, I think I just absolutely snap at the opportunity to start the game over where I have drawn an extra card. Well, all right then. Oh, shit. Well, this is Painter, uh, in which case the Lorens are much, much stronger than I thought. I thought we were playing against Initiative. Like, obviously was wrong. Uh, I could just get turn three'd. Like, that is a very real thing that can happen here. Uh-huh. That is, that is respect. That is respect for the dog. Uh, it can get big fast. Like, I, I understand. Uh, um. I am going to Wasteland. I think I Wasteland City of Traders, and then my opponent loses their Urza Saga as well. And they might not have metal craft or something like a Mox Opal immediately. Yeah. 
I think I'm on this plan. All right. And you may have your token. Not too worried about just dying to this token when I have double Stoneforge Mystic for Cauldra coming in the not too distant future. Okay, there is the Mox Opal. And I didn't count the Construct token when I was thinking about Metalcraft. Um, so that does produce a mana. Okay, what do you do again? Spend it to cast a Legendary Spell. Got it. Sure. I guess I'll play that. And I'll ploop a Stoneforge Mystic into play. It is Cauldra, right? Yeah, I think it's Cauldra. It, it just clocks really hard and can be offensive or defensive as I feel like I need. Uh, sure, Swords is fine. Okay, cool. No, no land drops, so some stuff's going to get stuck in hand. I'm only taking three damage. I get to just play a new Stoneforge Mystic. I can play Brimaz if I feel like that's better after I kind of look at my draws. Brimaz into Flowering of the White Tree is a lot of power. And this stops me from taking a hit for three. I think I am into this. Does cost me one life. It is another Fury. Pitching Pyroblast. All right, goodbye, Brimaz. I'll take three more damage. Stoneforge Mystic is coming down the pipeline here. Does unfortunately cost me a life. Not much to be done there. We'll grab Ember Cleave, which can do some interesting things. Also clunky not having my mouse buttons being able to uh, progress through my turn. Feel like a barbarian. All right, cool. So I'm going to put in Cauldra to block. This doesn't make mana if Cauldra is in play. Colorless is not a color. I mean, I can still tap it for the first ability. I was just thinking about the middle one there. Yeah, this is like awkwardly only using two of my mana for this turn cycle, but that is what it is. All right, there's another land. All right, there's the painter. Uh, this is this is scary because a third mana represents a grindstone kill. Yep. All right, end of turn. Activate. Put in Cauldra. Cauldra's a 5-5. Five, five. What's the buff on Ember Cleave? Plus 1, plus 1, double strike trample. So I can deal 12 with it this turn. I deal 14 if I play Flowering of the White Tree. So I think I'm going Yaw, Mox Amber. This is when it enters. Yeah. Send it. Oh, neat. I get to make blue with this because painter. Put in Ember Cleave. Put it here. So this is 12. Uh, I see if we, we dodge a mana source from my opponent. I'm fine if they just like swords to plowshares this creature. I go up to 6 and then get hit for 5. They said they drew 2 fables, so we're going to get there. GG's. Uh, that one was close though. Today's video is sponsored by Moxfield.com, and honestly, they're just the best at what they do. If you need to keep your deck lists online, this is the way to do it. They have all sorts of different viewing options. You can condense that text if you like things to be tight. You can make them visual grids. You can put them in stacks. You've got all sorts of different ways to kind of view and visualize your deck lists. And they also have some really cool functionality, like allowing you to see playtest hands and even fully playtest your decks. So check them out. Well, I have no creatures in my aggro deck, so this one goes back. I have no mana. We're on five. One, two, three, four. Uh, it's, a, it's a keep. And it's honestly pretty respectable. This one always goes back, and then it's one of the red creatures. I think I'm keeping Inti. My opponent says hello to you all, YouTube. Oh, and my mouse is fixed. I just had to reinstall. Thanks, Indy. I had to reinstall my mouse software. It got corrupted. Which it, like, did that between last night and this morning, so... Weird. This is no play in the first turn cycle from a polluted Delta deck, which has my brain in combo mode. Send it. All right, opponent's at 18. I think I'm going to 
just Stoneforge Mystic first. Worse against Daze, but assuming that I am playing against a combo deck, it is a faster clock. It is a Fatal Push. I am wrong. This is probably a Sultai Beans deck. This is a whenever you attack. So I think I am interested in playing this free combat. I play the land to play around days. Am I going down a creature here? Goodbye, Inti. That's not unexpected here. So Isamaru continues to get some beats on. I feel a little bit like I'm going to fall behind in this game. I'm already down two cards versus a control deck. And my opponent is doing a pretty good job of answering my stuff. This this is interesting, like, from their perspective. Like, this can be cashed in for a card later. They are holding up mana. I think I respect the pace of the game here. And just play Flowering of the White Tree. And make it so that my creatures become harder to remove. It means that I don't start scaling up for Inti immediately or anything. But hopefully that's fine. See what my opponent's got going on end of turn. Sauron's Ransom, maybe? Hey, called it. Three versus Murderous Cut? Brainstorm's good. My opponent's at 11 already. This, this is the only card that matters. I can't put Murderous Cut in the face-up pile, or they basically always take it. Maybe I don't give them three raw cards. Force of Negation doesn't really matter. I'm going to give them face-up Brainstorm Stifle. No, this is, like, not good enough. They always take this bottom pile, I think. All right. Three versus one. All right. They have taken the three cards. That's fine. Uh, Merc Tide? Seems good. So now I can play multiple spells in this turn cycle. I can't quite attack into this super well right now. I can prep for the future. Force of Will. I'll take one here to play my other card. Uh, Murktide's got the ground stalled. But it shouldn't be that hard for me to push damage through unless my opponent starts coming up the board with things like Orcish Bowmasters as well. <laughs> so I'm at 18. Now Murktide gets to attack and my opponent can just do some chump blocking. What is this monkey that this makes? 2-1, so it'll really be a 3-2? Three, three, no, 4-2. Get big. Oh uh, yeah, you can wasteland me. That's, that's fine. I'm not getting too hard cast Caldra levels of mana. Witherbloom command. Sucks for me. Oh, my opponent can like wasteland me again now. I mean, that's, that's obviously good, but probably not that big of a deal unless yet another wasteland comes through. My bigger problem here is that, like, these creatures are much worse without the flowering of the white tree around. I think I still just have to turn them sideways. I'll make my monkey. Uh, that's fine. The thing that's not fine is the Murktide Regent. So my opponent's at seven. Oh, shit, it's Ragavan? It's Ragavan. All right, cool. So I need to answer Murktide Regent or find a way to deal seven in one turn cycle through my opponent's four cards. Fuck, I'm dead right now. I'm so dead right now. Yeah, this is this is why you play a control deck that is good at turning the corner, like uh, Soul Type Beans. Yeah. Well done, opponent. Uh, how am I sideboarding? I don't. I don't think I am. I could Lauren for the up the bean stocks. Lauren's just slow. And the activated ability is not particularly good, and Lauren dies to Bowmasters. There's a lot of strikes against Lauren here. But beans matter. I'll probably get rid of gut. The four ones are vulnerable to bowmasters. This is a one three. Int is two two. I assume that I scale this up outside of Bowmaster range immediately most times that I play it. 
think I'm going to get rid of Embercleave. The extra bodies off of this are pretty good. I don't know, maybe Embercleave's ability to just mark someone instantly is something that I should be respecting more than I am. Uh, get rid of one of these. Uh, yeah, this is this is fine. This is a, a pile of lands and spells. I have the ability to cast my stuff. We're good. All right. My opponent has mulliganed once. We'll see how good their hand is. If they don't have Fatal Push immediately, like, I'm going to at least be representing a relatively large amount of damage. I can play Inti and go aggro here. I don't think I want to do that, though. I think I want to put my opponent to the removal test for Stoneforge Mystic in the short term. I don't think I need red red for anything in the short term. Um, I am just going to grab the cauldron, despite the awkwardness of that potentially getting stuck in my hand. It represents just so very much pressure. And if Stoneforge dies, then like Adeline and Inti can start doing stuff. And I am overall fine with that. A dismember? A dismember. Cool. Please don't daze me. Nice. Dog. Plus token. Uh, this is a lot of onboard power. We've got two, five, six. Human? Are these humans? Yes, they are humans. What is Inti? Inti is also a human. Awkward? Eh, not actually awkward, right? So I'll just swords this out of the way. I think play Wasteland. Play Inti. Send on in. Make a 1-1. One, one. I think I am fine discarding the Cauldra. Let's counter up the token. A Lauren. Eh. Opponents at 6. I will Wasteland the Black Source. And call it a turn. And I essentially just turned Cauldra into a plus one, plus one counter. <laughs> I respect it. Um, we got a little lucky there between my opponent's mulligan and our kind of fast start. That's how we want these to play out. I conceptually don't mind Thalia, but after seeing Plague Engineer as well, I am just not particularly excited about that. I haven't drawn a War Leader's Call yet, but that is probably some nice reach towards the tail end of this game in a slow matchup like this one. Um, This doesn't really do anything. This is five mana sources, no early creature. I think I just mulligan. Oh, this can actually be used to cast Flowering of the White Tree, can't it? It's not legendary creatures, it's legendary spell. I guess I am keeping this getting rid of the Swords to Plowshares that I currently do not have the ability to cast, and I just... I... Alright, well, I'm not Wastelanding my opponent, so that solves that issue of whether or not I am just firing off Wastelands in the early game. My next decision is whether or not I play Plaza of Heroes or Wasteland on my first turn. I think it's Plaza of Heroes. Plateau is more valuable than it. Okay. So. Now what? I think I'm going to play Flowering of the White Tree here. I, I think that Ward 1 is relatively valuable for making it so that, like, Bowmasters won't ping this token. This gives up some kill speed. Like, if I play this and then play this the following turn, my goldfish speed is faster. But I don't think this game is about raw speed. I think it's going to be more about running my opponent out of removal spell. Because I'm, I'm just not coming out of the gates that fast, even if I play this creature this turn. Beans? Beans. Wasteland's fine. Like, I've got a Mox here. That helps with that a lot. And I've got extra lands. All right. I'll play this Mox. Ooh, this one is creatures and planeswalkers. Oh, that's awkward. Um, are we doing this? 
Are we doing this? I think no. That's a daze, and this isn't on. Got it. Like I said, this is almost a mox. It's not literally a mox. Oh, no, that's so bad. Merktide Regent draws a card, too. All right, what do you actually do? Whenever you attack with one or more gnomes, get more creatures. Or not gnomes, get more creatures. Uh, let's add a line here. And my hope is next turn, play Animpakal and then double Wasteland. If that all were to work, that would put me in a very advantageous position. But as of right now, I'm probably just dead in three turns to Merktide Regent. Uh, Brainstorm's fine. Maybe a scary moment for my opponent if they don't find a fetch land. Like this, this is a beefy Adeline. Yeah, I can uh, try to live the double wasteland plan. I think I'm about to lose flowering of the white tree, though. Uh, yep. My opponent got Tropical Island back. Understood. So, need to do that differently. Anim Pakal. Wasteland U. Wasteland U. Combat. Attack. So get a critter, get a critter, put a counter here. This is six damage this turn. And, I don't know, infinity damage next turn or some shit. I don't actually have red to channel so Kenzen. Right? Or no. I do have red. It's another Merktide again. Fuck. Why is Merktide so good? This one's only worth two plus one plus one counters, but it still just leaves me dead next turn. My opponent could die, though. So Adeline just gets chump blocked by the Merktide Regent, and I don't think I'm going to have enough damage to force things through here. Well, my opponent is either dead or isn't, and I'm not going to do the math, because I am deterministically dead to this. None of my stuff flies. I guess I should do the math, because I could redraw if the math doesn't work. All right, so this is two creatures. Three, the two, three, four, five, six... Or no, it's not going to be that. So one, two, three, four, five from Adeline, six, seven from Anim Pakal, eight, nine, ten. The line is always blocked. Seven. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just short. So I need to cycle. Oh, uh, that doesn't do it. Send them. Yeah. So this gets blocked. My opponent goes to four, and even if I had the extra two from Sokenzen, I'm just, just short. That second Merktide did it. The first Merktide would not have been enough. So, this one's pretty close. If I hit another, um, if I hit another uh, land, I think this hand is insane. But I think this is already a mulligan to six with this card in hand. I think I'm going to take the actual mulligan and try to find something smoother. Uh, this is fine. Mox Amber is currently not a real card, so we're going to go ahead and get rid of that. And we'll see what my opponent is messing around with. Holy fuck, that's a lot of Stoneforge Mystic. Uh, if memory serves, my opponent was playing a Rug up the Beanstalk deck recently. Uh, sure, but Double Flooded Strand doesn't look like that. Like, this looks more like something like Cephalid Breakfast or a control deck list of some kind. All right. There's a second fetch. Hardcast Days, maybe? Oh, Reprieve. That's a... That's a choice. We'll see if it ends up making sense. Fourth Aerolingas would be devastating. Yeah. Got it. I'll take a little bit of damage here. The scary part is my opponent becoming the monarch. My mana's also oh god, that's so good. That was so, that was such an important draw. So I'm gonna play Stoneforge. That's getting the cauldra. And I'm gonna attempt to just immediately take this body out of play before my opponent has a chance to untap and like reprieve it or equivalent. 
because my mana is definitely tight right now. I get swords. Is that Marktide region again? Getting rather sick of that fellow. It is. That's a 6-6. Six, six. My opponent remains the monarch. The hope was that I cleared their board. And then I just got to poke them for the monarch before they found a larger creature. That's not actually happening. So instead I have a 6-6 a six, six clock that I need to race. Get the Ember Cleave. I think I am just playing a second Stoneforge Mystic here. Days wouldn't surprise me, but we dodge it. I am luckily at 19 life here, which means that Marktide Regent is not a three-turn clock by itself. It's still horrifying. Don't get me wrong. Don't verdict. Fuck. That's neat art. Um, yeah, the Monarch here is a problem. Caracas is great. I may still just be double spelling this turn for mana efficiency purposes, though. Like, protecting this creature is great and all, but I'm just going to get buried by cards if I don't set myself up for success here. So I think I just count on my deck having 30 creatures or whatever in it, and I'll draw more if I lose this one. But I, I think I am going to need chip damage from this. Yeah, let's just always yield to that. And uh, we're not that far away from just casting things like Cauldra and Embercleave. And Karizev will reduce the cost of Embercleave by two if it attacks. Meaning that this is a four drop. Yeah, that's actually totally reasonable. I draw another land, though. I might just go for uh, Andril this turn. There's a fetch for that ponder. And let's see what my opponent does afterwards. We're in Mystic Sanctuary territory. Or no, not quite yet. We are after this one. A Teferi. That takes, my, that takes some pressure off my opponent in the short term and just allows them to continue to draw cards with Monarch. Uh, which is what they want. Uh, that's great for me, because I happen to draw another. So this one I have with Caracas back up. Caracas plus creature plus war leader's call is kind of sweet. Like, I, I like this. I am unsure whether or not I kill the Teferi. That's a solitude. This accomplishes, like, taking this creature off the board for a turn cycle, uh, which allows the Teferi to continue to tick up and Monarch draws to continue to happen. So this is quite favorable for my opponent still. So I play this. It eats Force of Will. I don't think I am wastelanding my opponent. I believe that I need to respect getting to 7 mana and hard casting a 7 drop. So let's just do this and call it a turn. Uh, we can accelerate things very quickly, but I think my opponent is quite favored here. Like, ripping a Murktide or a fourth Aeor Lingas is so good right now. And even cantripping for these cards is just going to be strong. I think my opponent's favored, but I also don't think the game is over. That's no shuffle, though. So this is a six-point life swing every time this connects due to the lifelink. Fuck, I think they got Merktied. They do. That's 10. Ganjo is 4 damage. So I can a Ganjo a Solitude, take 7, go to 3, then rip Swords of Plowshares to answer Merktied Regent. That doesn't feel good, but that's the plan. So, yaw, yaw, yaw. Down to three. Got massive problems here. Teferi just uh, does Teferi stuff. As my opponent continues to bury me in cards. Uh, Inti is not gonna do it here. I will concede. That was rough. I kind of conceptually like Thalia to make my opponent stumble a little bit more. I don't think I want to mess around with anything like Ley Lines. I'm so low on creatures that I'm not um, if my opponent is doing their thing that I'm not in love with the Embercleave, I think I'm going to cut that. 
I'm going to get rid of the gut. And uh, one other random body. I'm unsure how to evaluate this card in terms of like when I cut it. It is multiple different bodies, but if my opponent has a pile of two twos, this isn't exactly attractive. Uh, this has one creature. This is not enough gas. Uh, oh god, this is awkward. So play this, play this, play Mox. The Mox only produces white. It doesn't curve into this. So basically any time that I don't hit a red source on turn two, I, I think I'm just out of the game. I don't think I can keep this one, unfortunately. All right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I'm just getting rid of both of the Moxen, unfortunately, since I have mulliganed twice. As much as I love the potential speed boost here, I think I have to just respect raw number of creatures. And I don't think I'm supposed to, like, double mox into Thalia on turn one or anything. I think that line is just too soft to a Swords to Plowshares on my dog. It makes a big dog, though. I will give it that. All right, we've got a fetch. An opponent is pondering. They went into the tank for a little while. I'm not sure if they were thinking about their hand or if they stepped away for a minute. The ponder did not shuffle. I think this is Thalia to slow my opponent down. And then Inti next turn if I miss on a land drop. Nice. Two points of dog damage. Got a relatively modest four power in play. I realistically should only expect to be attacking with one of these bodies next turn. That's not a good draw. So this is Inti. Inti hitting a land would be cool. My opponent can't both force and play a source to plowshares, so that's some nice tension here. All right, we're in play. All right, send it. I don't know which creature to put the plus one plus one counter on like i know i'm discarding this cauldra i think the thalia is more valuable i think i put the counter here uh, adeline is a miss unfortunately removal spell is solitude all right yeah thalia is going i do connect for the four though i don't get to uh play this one i have six maybe seven damage Showing currently, if I decide to discard a card. The fairy's annoying. That's a really big blow. Sure. How does this work? Cool. So, yeah. Yeah. Excellent. But now this attacks your face. I create my token. That'll come in attacking the Teferi. I'm not going to use Inti's ability this turn. I'll use it next turn, uh, if Inti is still around and I don't eat something like a Supreme Verdict. I don't know that I come back from Supreme Verdict if it happens. Which I'm guessing it isn't happening, because it would just be the fastest windmill slam of a card in history here. Uh, well, say Livy. Used Cauldra already, so this is a little rough. Yes, I've made my choice about which uh, equipment to get. Just thought you all should know. Pick Andoril. Flame of the West. Uh, removal spells are very good against me at this point, and my opponents, Merktide Regents, Fourth Air Lingas, those sorts of things are also going to be quite good. Is this two to equip? This is two to equip. So if I get a land, I can Stoneforge in and equip here. This is legendary. I can get a counter. This is a land drop. It looks like Merktide Regent as well. Okay, my opponent is making a small Merktide Regent and has paid some extra mana here. So I have to keep in mind that a second Merktide Regent could be coming. All right, activate. Bam, scale this up. Equip. This is a 5-3. This currently trades with this Merktide Regent. I am fine with making this attack. And this produces some spirits with flying as well. And then I can just start moving this equipment around to spirits and stuff to keep the pressure up. 
All right, they are taking the block. That's two in combat. Is there going to be another Merc Tide? Not immediately. I think this goes here. Solitude doesn't have flying. Removal spell now? I don't think so. I think you remove in combat, right? So I don't just re-equip. I'll shut up if you have another removal spell. I, I, I think unless you have another Swords to Plowshares, you just do this in combat. So this is five in the air right now, putting my opponent to three, which is effectively six because of Solitude. Yep, this is all fine and dandy. Undural doing some work. These Mox Ambers are not what I am looking for right now. Yeah, this is what should have, should have happened last time. I think I attack with two of these and then leave one back and equip it. Opponent's at four. I'll do this. And pass the turn. Opponent can play Brazen Borrower if they want at end of turn for the cost of one life. Which seems like it might be happening. It is. So now the question is like, when Solitude attacks, do I block? Seems like yes. Seems like I just take that off the board. Because I don't have lethal if I attack anyway. I, I think I'm just going to take this block. And we'll just continue to work on whittling down my opponent's resources. Uh, that's, that's real good. That's real good. Reprieve. Got it. I don't think I'm recasting that. I think I'm just equipping. I, I think just continuing the stream of spirits is incredibly important. Fine attacking with both and losing one of these to the Brazen Borrower block. They just come into play tapped, not tapped and attacking, since this isn't legendary. And then hopefully I just play Flower of the White Tree next turn and kind of end the game. Eh. Wasteland is not what I am looking for. That is a hard cast Force of Will. What's my opponent's last card? I equip. Gotta be like a Solitude? Yeah, okay. So that takes one of these out. Probably wasteland my opponent. Take them off a tundra. I won't block here. They can have their three life. I just can't trade two bodies for a solitude right now when each one of these spirits just represents two more creatures per turn cycle. Okay, we win this one. My opponent's very low on clock. Not like low enough that they might just like immediately die to timeout or anything, but they are potentially going to have to pick up the pace this game a little bit. My, my Mox Ambers weren't great this game, but they are something that gives me that early game velocity. I could just cut them to keep threat density. Cutting them makes this creature worse, and also this kind of worse. And it makes double two drop harder. I think I'm going to cut two and put two more creatures back in, though. Not 100% sure. Um, I have two lands. This is fine. We can maybe do some interesting things with Gut. I'm just going to confirm. This can be one mana of any spell, any color to cast Legendary Duders. So let's cast a Legendary Duder. Great. I'd like to get on board enough. Oh, okay, Prismatic Ending. Anyway, I'd like to get on board enough that I'm not just going to be fully dead to an early fourth Aerlingas. I'd like to draw a land. I draw a land. I can attack. I can play gut, attack, and stack these triggers so that I can sacrifice the Ragavan. Uh, that's annoying. Yep. Um... Land would be great. Not land. These are legendaries. I can't play out both of those. So I'm going to kind of end up in this same position where a removal spell is going to be good against me. Fairy's going to tick up. Now it's just a question of how many removal spells do you have versus do I hit this next land and I don't. This is really awkward regarding Supreme Verdict in particular. I'm going to do this. 
I have to go to combat. I do this pre-combat so that if I do get to make the Ragavan, I scale this up. Uh, sure. I'm gonna lose this to a swords? I do. That's rough. So, I've got a 2-2 on board, but that doesn't kill Teferi next turn. Unless I get a land and can just play Gut, which would be cool. Or the Aerolingas. Yep, so they're gonna attack in to force me to block. Solitude would be a disaster. Fuck. Uh, uh, yeah, obviously this is very strong. So my opponent is now on board with a bounce spell and the Monarch Emblem. They'll have three cards in hand at end of turn. Uh, and I, it, it's a disaster for me that I am not hitting this next land drop. Because I am just losing out on the ability to double spell and such. Um, I still get the Cauldra to force the bounce. Yeah, but not being able to, like, Stoneforge and Isamaru, and then not being able to, like, activate Stoneforge and Swords, um, is, is rough. Oh, that Sword of Plowshares is gross. Other fourth Aerolingas. It is a Murktide Regent. Oh, yeah, this is not great. Uh, it doesn't help that one of my two lands is a pain land. So let's attempt to remove the 5-5. Five five. Opponent does not have any counter spells. They've F6'd my turn. They are respecting their own clock quite a bit now. Like, they know they're low on, no, low on time, but are also an incredible favorite to win this game right now. They've kept off the ponder, but they're using a lot of clock. So there's that. Inti, huh? I mean, it's very clearly my play. So let's do this. I imagine that one of these two cards eats a removal. A Kozilex return. Sure. That's a spicy one. This is a shuffle for that ponder. Yeah, I desperately need this next land. And the two Moxen that I have boarded out would not be good enough. I think my opponent has a Murktide Regent that they just didn't play, so I think they have Force of Will. Ugh. I mean, this is fine. The ward is legitimately annoying. Or if I do actually draw this land. But my opponent can just, like, bounce this out of play with the Teferi that's on a gajillion loyalty. Uh, yep, and they do so. And then they're cantripping. Fetch to clear Brainstorm. Is there a threat yet? No. Mox Amber is not what I need it to be right now. I think I'll take one to recast this. Yeah. It's in play. It's out of play. Uh, sure. Um, this Brazen Borrower can four-turn clock me. Like, that's a reasonable threat. Magus of the Moon is pretty bad for me. And there's a Brazen Borrower. My opponent's just doing that now so they can F6, uh, which is perfectly reasonable. Uh, that's annoying. That is finally my land. Gut is the only one of these that is castable. I don't have a need to play Mox Amber right now. I'll just pass the turn. Swords is good. My opponent needs to do three attack steps versus me in order to kill me. And this Teferi is going to make blocking pretty difficult. So, like, I can play this, but, like, to what end? Sure. Yeah, I think I come up just short here. Yeah, my Mox Amber not producing mana on turn 12 is rough, as was just not hitting that other land. Like, I think if I get to deploy even one of these creatures, I buy enough time so that my opponent times out. Uh, that is not gonna do it, unfortunately. I am dead. GG's. So, Mox Amber is almost a real Mox, but you can't use it to cast your first Legend, which I really need here, so this one has to go back. Uh, I don't have two mana to play Stoneforge. This one has to go back as well. Curse you, Mox Amber. Well, his third hand is capable. I have a plan. I'm getting rid of this and this. My hand does exactly one thing. Please don't Cabal Therapy me. 
And I think I'm just leading on Wasteland so that my Caracas is never Wastelanded. Uh, which may have been a relevant decision. Mountain? Oh no. Well, actually, maybe it's fine. Oh. This is some sort of like... I'll hold this one. Um, anyway, this is some sort of like madness, lizard, vengevine nonsense. Yes. Cauldra. Pass turn. Let's see if they're drudging. They are. What is this one? Uh, two damage divided as you choose among any number of targets. If this madness cost was paid, it deals X damage divided among creatures and players instead. Okay, got it. Sure. So this gets them a 4-3, uh, which I'm honestly not that worried about. I will eat that damage. Um, I'm probably not the beat down here. Like, I, I think I'm just putting Cauldra into play in this turn cycle rather than putting it into play and attacking. I think I can eventually just bury my opponent in equipment and probably two-turn clock them with a Cauldra. Sure, sure, sure. Uh, we know my opponent has a life from the loam, so Wastelanding is not particularly an attractive thing to do here. Uh, sure. Uh, that's fine. That does attack each combat, if able. Uh, by the way, just for Cauldra purposes. Let's put in Cauldra. And I'd like to draw a land here. I did not. So I have two uncastables. Let's go ahead and Stoneforge. I think I'm getting the Ember Cleave. That one automatically attaches if it hits play. And I can just attempt to two turn my opponent with a Cauldra. 6-6 six, six, double strike a Cauldra seems good. A gamble. I don't imagine they gambled for Wooded Foothills. We'll see if my opponent has something that deals with Cauldra. Otherwise, they might have just gambled for a Madness card or another Vengevine. It is an LED. I can use that off this trigger to do some kind of interesting things. I can use it to flash back a looting. A new gamble. They discarded Loam, so they've got something. Ooh, it's an Ox. I'm not sure if you're supposed to ox right now. Like, you can wait on the ox until after this. Because you're about to draw three cards that you're somewhat likely to just discard to this on the forced attack. I'm not saying it's wrong. I don't, I haven't seen a good portion of their deck yet, so I don't know. Sure. All right, the root wallet gets pumped. And now we're going to see this attack. Stromkirk Occultist. Where is this card? Over here? Oh, so I need to put this here so I can see it on the screen. When it deals combat damage to a player, exile the top card of your library until end of turn. You may play that card. Okay, got it. My opponent's not going to cast that. So I'm going to do this. And now I'm just thinking if I need to use a Stoneforge to absorb some life. I block a Vengevine, I take 3, I go to 13, there will be 8 on board damage. I use the other Stoneforge to put in Ember Cleave, I attack for 12, and I am the aggressor now. I think I like that. Yeah, I think I like that. Alright, so first strike happens. I lose a Stoneforge, I'm at 13. Oh, there's more! Another gamble. This is a neat build. It is another ox. That's gross. Now this is cool. I might not be the aggressor anymore. My opponent. Do these trample? No. I block. Uh, well, I guess a lot of this depends on whether or not I draw a land. I do. If I play a new Stoneforge with the intention of blocking one ox... I take 5, 9, 10, 11, 12 if Rootwalla pumps itself. Uh, I could die. I think I need to try to finish the game. Send it. Activate. Ember Cleave here. For 12 damage. 
putting my opponent to five, keep the untapped Caracas, Stoneforge Mystic, yes, grab a sword, and I'll see if I'm dead. My opponent can produce some extra power or remove Stoneforge Mystic, they've got me, uh, but I, I think I just have to go for it. My creatures aren't larger than theirs right now. <clears throat> Alright, block five. No root wall of pump. Do you have three damage that just goes to my face? Not immediately. Uh, madness is fine. Uh-huh. Find a bolt. Oh, shit. Okay. Uh, that was a little lucky. So I have seven anti-graveyard cards here, uh, which is cool. Thalia may be worth considering. My opponent's... Almost like a combo deck list with their weird graveyard, gambly, LED, ox loops. I don't think I like Gut. I think this is borderline too slow to ever be equipped. This is slow. This is slow. I just have to board in so many cards here. My Mox Ambers actually probably get significantly worse in this matchup. If I board out a bunch of legends, like this is a giant pile of non-legends. I'm not boarding out my early game legends or anything, but this feels fine. Uh, I'm going to say yes to this. The graveyard's off. I have a removal spell for something like a hollow one that slips through. I have a scaling threat. And I'm pretty darn good if I get to Inti. Uh, yeah, that's fine. You get your lizard. Sure. Okay, cool. I do have another land. I think it is worth the life to play this. Uh, it does suck that these are both pain lands, given that I am facing like an aggro combo deck. Uh, sure. Opponent going all in. So Fiery Temper can kill my creature. And then what does this card do? It stop bouncing around. When you deal combat damage to a player, exile a top card of your library until end of turn you can play that card. Uh, yeah, sure. That's good. All sorts to plowshares that, almost certainly. I'm going to take four here. And then this triggers. Uh, Vengevine is not castable. All source of plowshares on their turn. I unfortunately don't have a use for my other mana. I'm just going to cast this immediately. I don't want to get caught by some weird Legolas's quick reflexes bullshit when I am this far ahead. Uh, yeah, that's fine. I'll take the three. I hate that this is two points of damage. Like I may lose this one just to having double pain land. I think I'm going... Kari Zev here, and then playing Flowering of the White Tree. And then this has four toughness, so this doesn't get through anymore. Yep, uh, no blocks. You can pump if you want. They do not, but I have to respect it. Uh, that's very strong for my opponent. Wish I had a Batter Skull. All right. I'm at six. These double pain lands are rough. Let's see if my opponent has some fun madness stuff. No, they have once upon a time. I will block here. Uh, yeah, these double pain lands are rough. Like a lizard getting through at some point kills me now just because I have double pain land when I otherwise like just have overwhelming control of the game. Uh, that's fine. That's a literal 50-50 gamble. Uh, what goes to exile? LED goes to exile. So I go to one to play an NT. I think I have to assume that my opponent has a removal spell in hand and not attack this turn. I just have to leave both creatures back, and then eventually I will draw non-pain lands that I can do stuff with. Oh, oh, that can just go directly to my face. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, I think we got a little unlucky there, but... Not so much that I think it is terribly worth complaining about. Uh, awkward Painland is awkward. I have a theoretical turn one, turn two, turn three curve. Leyline hands are really good. 
I'm going to ship this. Yeah, this is much, much, much stronger. Uh, Amber Cleave is not super great right now. Go ahead and get rid of that. And start with the ley line in play. Right, I'm on the play. I get to be a second main phase hipster this time. Yeah. And then we theoretically have flowering of the white tree into Brimaz, and that's pretty darn good. Uh, sure. Finding a root walla. And playing Faithless Looting. Just put in, putting some lizards in play. Uh, madness things are cast, just by the way. With Leyline in play, I don't think I need to play this immediately. I think I'm just going this route. This scales my creature up. I have a 4-3, and I have to decide whether or not I am the beatdown. I can trade this for a lizard. I don't like super want to do that. Because this is going to continue to scale up and get to the point where it doesn't trade with these. Like, I just need one more legendary creature played. So, like, Grimaz, if I draw a land, or basically any creature in my deck other than Stoneforge and the Containment Priests. Like, I, there's, there's some whiffs like Leyline, but this seems okay. Let's see what my opponent does with their mana. They could pump it into Lizards, which, like, would be totally fine and reasonable. All right, and one's going into Blazing Rootwalla. Is that it? There is a Gamble. Uh, so my opponent did not want to discard that card right now. There's an Inti, which I am going to play. This scales this up. I think a Containment Priest, which is a 3-3 at minimum, is not worth discarding for a plus one, plus one counter right here. Uh, so I'm just going to say no to that. Put my opponent to 10. And call it a turn. And if I miss a land drop and I can't play Brimaz, then I think maybe I'm discarding Brimaz to Inti. Um, I could take 6 here, in theory. I maybe just block. I think the easiest way for me to lose is just, like, take 6 off this stuff. LED, produce another really strong thing. I think I'm just going to block right here. Force my opponent to funnel two mana into this and try to constrain the rest of their turn. Uh, yeah, that's fine. All right, I'm at 13. Ooh. That lets me Brimaz, which I believe I am excited to do. It just scales this up. This is six incoming power. LED shenanigans could happen. They don't. My opponent is at four. Either one of these creatures connecting is now lethal. There's another land. Avacyn's Judgment. My opponent can divide a bunch of damage, uh, but it's not enough damage to kill both of my creatures. <laughs> I see. They target themselves on their way out. Honestly, I, I respect it. Yeah, so they can do six damage, kill one of these, and then they just like die to the other or are forced into chump blocking, and they don't really come back from that. Uh, GG's. Sweet deck. Uh, TSP, TSP, if you end up watching this, uh, shoot me an email with this deck list. All right, final round here. I'm not going to claim that my hand is great. I don't think it's bad. I don't think it's worth mulliganing or anything. But I'm sometimes finding that I get stuck on mana. Like, we have 22 lands in the deck, which is less than something like a 60-card Death and Taxes deck would have. I know we have the Moxon, but those aren't always live. All right. Tree or Stoneforge. It's hard to know without knowing the matchup which one of those is correct. If we're playing against something like Beans, I would like this card in play ASAP. I may give up two points of damage by playing this pre-combat, or I might gain two points of damage if it resolves. Go, doggy, go. 16. No plays in the first turn cycle for my opponent. Uh, that's an indicator of combo. Uh, I need to kill my opponent fast. Probably don't have to worry about counter spells anymore, but I do have to worry about just dying to beseech the mirror. Uh, which might be happening right now. It's not happening right now. My opponent might have been playing 
around Thalia by playing that stuff out. Uh, this is legendary, just FYI, which was something I did not realize when I played my pre-release, and I pulled two of them. And my one opponent that I played two of them against also did not notice. I realized it a few days later and felt kind of bad about it. Mad cheats. So let's just Brimaz. Brimaz represents so much damage with Flowering of the White Tree. Like, this is more damage than Stoneforge Cauldra for less of a mana commitment. So my opponent is very close to dead next turn. Oh, there's blue in their build. This is 5, 9, 10, 11, B12. Ooh. So you've got to kill me now or remove one of these creatures or the flowering. This is a long pause. This is probably good for me. Okay. This, though, is probably bad for me. So they just legend ruled that Mox Opal, I think, without making mana with the other one. Might not matter. Guy as well is a hell of a drug. Yep. So they crack Lotus Petal. They are going to get a whole bunch of Storm, and I think enough mana to be good. Yeah, so now they can just play Beseech again and kill me with a Tendrils. So a few clicks later, here is the Beseech for the Lethal Tendrils. We fall w literally one turn cycle too short of the kill here. So Thalia's good, Leyline's good, Lauren is like not stellar, but will sometimes blow up a land or critical piece of mana. Containment Priest specifically cares about creatures and graveyards, so that doesn't really do a ton here. We can board out our four copies of Swords to Plowshares. Those can become copies of Thalia. This is slow. Honestly, the entire Stoneforge Mystic package is kind of slow. Um, do I have enough cards to just do this? 59, basically. War Leader's Call is probably worse than two Stoneforges and one Cauldra. So this has no starting mana. Uh, I don't know that this is objectively powerful enough. Turn one Isamaru. Turn two Inti. Discard some card. I'm attacking for three. Turn three Flowering of the White Tree. This is defensible. I think I lose if I keep this, though. This is the best hand that I've seen so far. Uh, this one goes... And probably this one. Because I need white, white with this hand. All right. A thought seize on my Thalia is pretty devastating. Like, a starting Leyline is stronger than a starting Thalia in hand. Okay, cool. We dodge. Uh, that's nice. Send in for my two. And then I have to decide whether or not I am playing Wasteland this turn and showing Wasteland. Or if I am just taking one damage off Sunbaked Canyon. I think the individual points of damage matter enough that I don't take the damage. Like two Sunbaked Canyon taps is... Uh, you know, one less spell that my opponent needs to cast. My Flowering of the White Tree becomes a little awkward because I need to get rid of my Wasteland in order to play that out. So, like, that's a thing. I'd like to draw another spell here. I don't. So now it's, do I want Thalia with Ward or do I want to Wasteland my opponent? I think I want to Wasteland my opponent. Uh, so let's just do that. Play this. I'm attacking in for the four. Opponent is at 14. I'll pass the turn. Flowering of the White Tree is going to be plus four damage next turn. While more importantly, giving ward and making answers to Thalia more awkward. My opponent conceptually wants to make a couple of land drops, remove Thalia, and then storm off. I wouldn't be surprised to just see a pass the turn or play out a bobble or something like that in this turn cycle. That's probably the worst draw in my deck. That's okay. 
Let's play the flowering. And this is eight damage. So my opponent needs to do something in this next turn cycle here. They can, like, end of turn bounce Thalia and try to go off. That is a chain of vapor. They have to lose the lotus petal to do this. I will not be copying this. So I think my opponent messed up. They took four damage that they didn't need to take. I had tapped out for flowering of the white tree. I'm not going to put Thalia back into play if I have one card in hand. There's just physically no way to do that. So I think my opponent accelerated their own clock, uh, which is going to make things like fetch lands so much more awkward. All right, we're getting spells. So they're going to attempt. Mox Opal does not have Metalcraft. Cabal Ritual does not have Threshold. That is a Beseech. Oh, I see. It's Beseech for a Beseech. And an Empty. Sure. That's a lot of blockers. Um, we'll see if this ends up beating me. This Pain Land might be awkward. As weird as this is, I maybe I'm supposed to play Brimaz this turn rather than Thalia. That way, if I draw a one-drop creature, I can play one-drop creature and Thalia next turn. Whereas I can't do that with Brimaz. All right. A counter-argument here being that Brimaz costs me one point of life. Brimaz is sort of interesting here because Brimaz makes a friend every turn cycle as well. So I'm not taking, like, 12, then 10. It's going to be much better than that. Oh, yeah, okay. This is even better than I thought. I'm only taking 8 here. Uh, yeah. Forgot that Brimaz also does this on blocks. Like, nobody, nobody blocks Brimaz. A Mox Amber. I can play that prior to Athalia, and it's actually relevant. Yaw. Cast. I think I'm gonna just cycle this land. I guess there's nothing I would like to play more than Thalia though, right? So I will maybe cycle this end of turn. So this can attack, this can attack. Uh, this can also attack, right? I, I guess the only way I lose is these goblins killing me. Let's, let's not expose another creature to combat. All right, when it takes four, goes to one. And I'll pass the turn. I guess I could um, take a draw and try to hit Wasteland exactly. All right, cool. Uh, that was closer than I expected. I don't think I am changing anything here. So this game is fully, if I keep this hand, is fully just, do I make it to turn three to Thalia? I lose to my opponent turn twoing me, and I lose to a discard spell. This might not be good enough. I'm going to keep it. But this is a reluctant keep, not a keep that I am happy about. Okay. Are you going to just go off on turn one? A brainstorm. They can't wait to, like, fetch land here because the vault is serving as the third artifact for Metalcraft. Now, this is now awkward. Your opponent's going to have a lot of artifact mana on board. I might need to wasteland their vault. Now they're pausing after this brainstorm. Okay, they are going deeper. All right. I'm afraid of, like, Infernal Tutor. Yeah, Infernal Tutor into four mana, four goblins. Unless Beseech just has me deterministically dead. All right, it is Beseech. Yeah, uh, maybe we needed to mulligan to Leyline on the draw. That's Beseech for Beseech for Empty. Was there not a way to kill me from there? I mean, this, this probably works, but... I, I guess Opal doesn't get Metalcraft, and it's awkward, actually. Okay. Uh, so this is 18. I am not going to bounce back from that. I will concede. And that means that we put up a 2-3 finish in this league. All right, so how do we feel about this one? Medium. I think this deck has incredible upside for what it is capable of doing. I think it has some consistency issues. Like, when you lead on this on turn one and then play Mox, Amber, and Isamaru, like, you can be producing a very large amount of damage very quickly. We never really saw Kari Zev pop off in this league. 
I don't think I ever I, I maybe did one point of damage with a war leader's call. Um we drew flowering of the white tree a lot more, and this card was really impressive. The mana's not perfect. Mox Amble Mox Amber often isn't a red source because you have a lot of white legends that you are starting the game with, which can make some of the opening hands a little weird. I feel like I want more plateaus in this deck list for the Swords to Plowshares. Like, I think I would like Flagstones to be a plateau and maybe go down one Sunbaked Canyon for a plateau. Like, having multiple Sunbaked Canyons was just really bad. A lot of the one of or not four of legends did pretty well in this league. Brimaz looked good. Um, Adeline and Anipakal both were pretty reasonable. I don't feel like this was the best showing for Inti, but we ended up in some awkward situations, so I'm not going to blame Inti for that. Sideboard gave me reasonable options. I don't really know if Tividar of Thorn is worth the slots. Like, is destroying one goblin on this body better than just playing, like, two Path to Exiles, for example, so that you have extra cards to bring in versus Merktide Regent? That's kind of where my head is at. So I don't, I don't think this deck list was bad. I think we hit some weird variant spots, uh, and it's possible that this deck can be smoothed over more. I give it shaky sideways thumb pointing up a little bit. Um, I hope you all enjoyed. If you want to buy any cards for this deck, consider checking out Cool Stuff Inc. and using promo code THRAVENU to save a little bit on your next order, and I hope you all have a wonderful rest of the day. See ya!